When we examine algorithms, we can say something about their runtime and complexity. For example, if you want to find an item in a list of length n, using an algorithm that goes one by one until it finds the item, it will clearly take less than n steps. But what happens if we change the task? Instead, now let's try to look at a set of points on the plane that are labeled either positively or negatively, and try to build an algorithm that can classify them correctly. The algorithm could really be anything, as long as it has a way of separating points. You might start to wonder how many samples it would take to get the error to less than 10%, or 5, or what about 0? You might even start to wonder if you could prove entire concept classes, or if these things can be done in a polynomial number of steps. These questions and more is what fellow of the Royal Society, Turing Award winner, and Harvard professor Leslie Valiant set out to answer. In the process, he managed to spawn an entirely new field of research, develop a theoretical framework for the complexity of learning algorithms, and gain deep insights into something philosophically profound. But in order to understand the importance of his work, we must first look at where it came from. This paper was published in 1984, which was an exciting time for AI. After the early glory days of Shannon, McCarthy, and Weiner, came what would be referred to as the first AI winter. At this time, funding had dried up and AI research became stalled in its tracks. At the beginning of the 1980s, interest in AI began to return and research had started back up again. By this time, Valiant was already an established researcher in theoretical computer science, with a large part of his work on complexity theory in the previous decade. In the year 1984, just two years after he started teaching at Harvard, he published a paper titled, A Theory of the Learnable. The references in this paper tell a very interesting story. Among those cited are various papers on AI techniques and mathematical ones such as probabilistic methods and combinatorics. However, there is one in particular that is of interest, and that is Cook's paper on the complexity of theorem-proving procedures. This paper came from marrying the work of computational complexity and statistical learning theory from the 1970s. The combination of the two fields would form an entirely new one called computational learning theory. The work of Cook allowed Valiant to find a way to talk about a notion of complexity in the context of statistical learning and AI. It allowed Valiant to answer those questions we asked earlier. The solution he came up with came to be known as PAC learning. PAC learning stands for Probably Approximately Correct Learning. And we can use it to bound the error of a classifier with a certain probability of 1 minus delta. Admittedly, this is a bit simplified because the term PAC learning wasn't coined until after the 1984 paper. Additionally, the upper bounds provided were for learning conjunctive normal form and monotone disjunctive normal form, not a geometric-based binary classifier in the plane. But the importance was the way he proved it, not the result itself. After the framework of PAC learning had been developed, it allowed people to solve problems like the one mentioned earlier. This new framework now allowed us to talk about the complexity and performance of what we call learning. It was now possible to show that whole concepts could be efficiently learned by machines. Learning algorithms could be compared to one another, and machine learning could now have a strong theoretical and mathematically sound base. It is not often that a paper is so creative and influential that it spawns an entirely new field of research. A theory of the learnable is one of those rare exceptions. The impact that it had and still has today on modern machine learning theory is unparamount. Comparing it to some of the other well-known AI papers, its importance to modern research is clear. In the past 36 years, a theory of the learnable has been cited over 6,000 times, and that number is still growing larger today. Compared to the older papers from Shannon, McCarthy, and Weiner, it seems to have made a bigger impact on modern research. In fact, a theory of the learnable has been cited more than double the amount of all three combined. Some may argue that citations aren't everything and that those papers had a larger philosophical contribution than Valiant's. However, Valiant contributes a great deal in this area as well. After reading this paper over multiple times, I've come to the conclusion that Valiant was searching for something more important than combinatorial bounds on the number of samples to train a learning algorithm. Valiant seems to be driven by the concept of learning as something pure and fundamental. While theoretical computer scientists were trying to figure out what machines could compute, Valiant wanted to know what machines could learn. 
In the end, he concludes a learnable concept is nothing more than a short program that distinguishes some natural inputs from some others. He showed that learning was far simpler than we could have imagined and that it ought to be quantifiable. In conclusion, A Theory of the Learnable is a paper that truly should be considered a classic of computer science. Although it is hard to say what makes something a classic, Valiant's paper should definitely make the list. It had a large impact on modern computer science research, it fits in well with the story of the field, and its originality and philosophical nature definitely put it in the class with other papers we've read so far.